Hello, this is Mark from I Am Organic Gardening, located in Zone 6B in the state of New Jersey. And today I'm completely starting over so I can grow a cover crop on the soil, also vegetables inside that cover crop, so I can maintain the weed suppression that might be coming up from the crabgrass you're seeing here. And then also too, that we're going to be planting up other vegetables, and I have some vegetables growing. I do want to show you that some things did survive our hailstorm that we had here. Now, this is not a productive sunflower crop. There's very little few of them I can cut and actually sell. And when I was able to cut them and bring them to market, nobody showed up because it was pouring rain that day. In the last four days it's been raining, I actually got some things planted up on July 5th. And it's only been five days since they've been growing. So just five days ago, I was able to prepare the soil a little bit early before planting. I planted this on July 5th. Now you can see here, this green hay is growing. That's winter rye growing. Now if you plant winter rye in the summertime or any time after, let's say May 15th, and use it as a cover crop, it does not seed right away. It will actually just grow as a grass and just maintain a certain height, whatever it chooses to do because of the weather. It might be six inches tall, it might be eight inches tall. But now I can also plant some other items inside that winter rye that I know can actually suppress the height of that winter rye and make a large, say, um, plant on top of that winter rye and it would just be maintained slowly by the winter rye using that suppression around the base of the plant for weeds and other things too and I don't have to come in and cut it. It would just be maintained a certain height. Let me show you an example. I also know now by experimenting on July 5th planting the sweet corn that we have in four rows that are about say 25 feet wide and it takes up and about let's say 50 feet long there's a thousand seeds in there that I can plant the sweet corn up at the same time as a winter rye that you see over here and will not compete with each other too terribly and will give a good crop. Now we'll see that in the future of course. Now in other areas I planted up more sweet corn I have uh, three fields about the same size as this one that I'll be planting up all different kinds of vegetables. So here I have a row of sweet corn that's growing up slowly right down the center here. And you can see that that's up already within five days. And you can see that those corn seeds are unfolding already, those shoots unfolding that first leaf and coming out of the ground here. But I want you to take notice around the corn plant. In this one particular area that I was uh, trying to experiment on, I did not plant any winter rye, but I want to see how the weed pressure is. All this around here, like in the other scene, is pretty much nothing but crabgrass. Because it's, it's hot, it's about 90 degrees Fahrenheit right now, and moisture is high, humidity is high, and we had lots of rain. So now we're going to see, compare that to this corn, compared to, let's say this yellow squash here that we have, one, two, and three plants growing already within just five days, and then I also have my winter rye growing here. That's all these little things. This is not corn stalks, but some winter rye. I want to see how that winter rye is going to grow quickly, suppress the weeds, and also have the squash come up and also suppress the weeds, and also produce me some beautiful yellow squash to sell, and also enjoy myself. Now the advantage of, which I'll show you how I wrote it till the surface a little bit later on in the video, it's just an inch deep. I'm able to use my earthway cedar here to plant my crop. Now these rows are going to be at least 100 feet long. And I don't wish to stick each seed in the ground, which I could possibly do, just placing it on the soil and pushing it down with my finger. But again, that would be like 100 seeds. Uh, I would have to do that 100 times over 100 feet. Now I can quickly do it with an earthway cedar here and let them grow and thin out later. It's a lot easier for me. So here we have just our basic garden earthway cedar. Now, I love using this because it's simple and low tech and easy to clean. And it's very inexpensive. They run around between like say $90 to $125 and they're very easy to use. But the only way you can use it is to actually rough up that one inch of soil that we have here. Now, things have not been growing yet. We got lots of rain, about two inches in the last five days also too. Now the soil is very moist and it's not too compact and I'm able to get the seeds still in. Now, maybe a week later, I'm not gonna be able to do this. That's why I'm out here trying to explain as quickly as I can here so I wanna get the seeds in the ground. So now, we just have to fill that hopper, which is that black thing on top here with the 
words Earthway on it and the seed plate you can see behind it. Now we're going to be planting up, what do I got here? I got some spaghetti squash. Now spaghetti squash is going to take about 90 days. Now we just have enough time, which is perfect. So I'm going to fill up the hopper and I'll just show you how we can adjust it and get those seeds into the ground. So I'm going to place my planting depth here, which is on the bottom of the side here, you can do one inch. And we just tightened out a little uh, wing nut there. And now that's not too deep, help those seeds in the ground to get germinated. So the first thing today we're going to plant up is some spaghetti squash. We have our seeds in the hopper. We have our seed plate that's over here on the side. And you'll see if I turn this slowly, that it will pick up the seed here. And if I go a little bit further, there's a hole on the other side. And that's why you always keep it on an angle. It will drop down into the ground through the cedar. So here we have our earthway cedar. Our little separator here, or plow, is just gonna go down about one inch. The chain behind here, this chain behind here is gonna pull the soil back in. The front wheel is the drive mechanism with the belt that turns our seed plate here. And our back wheel is going to compress the soil once again to make that seed to soil contact. And it's just as simple. Pushing it along like so and cutting that soil open and pushing it down. Now you can see here, the trail that it leaves behind, like so, is again, nice and soft soil because we rode it till that top inch, the seed's down there, nice and easy. And now we compress that soil once again and just opening it up and planting our seed in there. Next will be our crimson sweet watermelon. This is not seedless watermelon. I don't grow seedless, I only grow the ones with the seeds in it. So just a quick review about what I planted up. In this row here and behind me, it's about 150 feet long, I have spaghetti squash. And then it goes out towards the woods over here. I have some uh, watermelon with seeds in it, not the seedless variety. And then over here, these two rows that are about 200 feet long, here and here, are butternut squash. Now, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. It's a great experiment and then we'll find out what I'm really looking for right now is hopefully I can get some produce off of it, but what most, most important is, is that it will grow with the winter rye and not compete against it. And that's what we're gonna find out. So hopefully you stay tuned over the next couple months and I'll show you updates on this. Again, this uh, might totally go wrong because of weather once again, it might just rain for the next couple months. I don't think so, I think it's gonna dry out. And actually I don't think we're gonna get much rain at all. But you can see here, let me just show you the soil that I planted into, that I have a good amount of organic matter already in there. And this here, like so, you can see how nice and rich that soil is. Now, I also have my seeds planted into this, which is very nice. It's just beautiful. Now that organic matter is going to help me keep moisture on top of the soil. But most important, if it doesn't rain, this soil will actually attract the moisture in the morning to go down inside the soil and to keep it just moist enough for those seeds to germinate and to grow. So we'll see how it goes in the future, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Now here I just rode it till the top inch. Now if you move the soil, you can still see it's hard and I didn't touch the bottom here at all. So all those roots from the weeds are still in there. I didn't disturb the soil, only the top inch. And now, again, I can use my cedar here and push along and make a groove and plant into that soil. So the reason why I planted up all that winter rye and trying to plant in the spaghetti squash or watermelon the butternut squash is this example right here that I'm following. Now this is pure nature at its finest. Now what we have here is nice big green foliage and what we have is pumpkin leaves here. Now that has grown inside this massive amount of weeds on top of some old mulch that I dumped in here 
and this is a volunteer plant. I don't even know where this pumpkin seeds came from, but you can see how nice and healthy those leaves are. Now the plant is doing fine, and I'll show you a pumpkin in, in a bit. There's one pumpkin that's doing quite well, and then another foot away that it's actually dying off. But nature takes care of itself. The reason why, again, I'm showing you this is because all the weeds around it are being eaten by Japanese beetles, not the pumpkin leaves, but also the weed called ladyfingers, and I'll show you that. Now this weed here, with the long finger on it, it's called lady fingers, and you can see those Japanese beetles, actually they're mating, and they are eating all those leaves around this pumpkin plant, but they are not going after the pumpkin itself. Here on the pumpkin leaves that we have some eggs that were laid, but there's enough, let's say, foliage around this area that will be a home to other beneficial insects. It's very hard when you plant a crop of something and it's the only thing that's around in the ground. Like your tomato plants also too. You need this surrounding area, like so, all in the background to be filled with something else. That's the habitat for all your beneficial insects. Let's say you release a 10,000 uh, ladybugs. They're only gonna do their job for a little bit because after they're done eating everything, they have to move on to stay alive. So they have to create this habitat for everything to stay in there. That's the way nature does it. It does not just have a monocrop of something and just to stay there, it has to have a habitat for all those other beneficial insects. And here you can see that nice green pumpkin growing that is a decent size and is very healthy already. And underneath this leaf, we have one that's not doing well. That's just strictly due to nature. And one last point I'd like to make in this uh, video today is that all these sunflowers that I didn't cut and was able to sell because of weather, but if I couldn't sell them, at least I can feed the pollinators. And also, these sunflowers are also feeding the soil. They're taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, making it to liquid carbon, and feeding the soil. I want to thank you so very much for watching today's video. If you get a chance, please like the video and share it with your friends. Until the next time, Enjoy gardening, and I hope you have a very successful season. I am jealous to see all your gardens on your pictures that you send me, and also on your YouTube videos. And thank you very much for showing how great your gardens are doing this year. Appreciate it. Thanks. Enjoy. And please subscribe.